Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. Are you looking for the perfect workout that you're absolutely gonna love? Well, you may be looking for love in all the wrong places. Also, later in the episode, Adam teaches you how to get the job of your dreams. That's exactly what I would do. Okay, I wanna work for him or I wanna work for her, I wanna work for that company. Okay, what skills would that job probably need to entail? Yeah. Okay, let me learn everything I can about it and find a way that I can support them on my own time, not asking anything in return, just to prove that I'm value. In the second half of this episode, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions like, does terkesterone really work? Well, we reveal the truth. Also, how can I build mental fortitude by training hard, but not overtraining in the process? Finally, don't forget we have another channel. It's called Mind Pump Clips, where we feature short clips from the show that you can share with your friends and family. All right, enjoy the show. Stop trying to find workouts that you love. Instead, try to figure out how to love workouts. Oh, I like that. Ooh, yeah. So this someone's like, what's the difference? <laughs> There's, a <big> di <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a big difference. One of them is trying, always trying new and different workouts, falling in love with the initial excitement of a new workout. You see this often with like group class type workouts, like, oh, I'm going to try that new urban hip hop class, or I'm going to try that new, you know, cowboy, whatever workout class, or, you know, it's you who says that it gets, <laughs> I caught myself saying that the other day. I'm like, where did I fucking get me, that? It's not even real. Urban class. cowboy hip hop I, class. Is that a, it's not, Cause I, I was referencing, <laughs> I guarantee it hey, exists. I was referencing sure beach body. I think it was in an interview. Someone was interviewing me and I was referencing a uh, beach body and I'm like, you know, like urban hip hop cowboy or something. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, is that really a program? <laughs> I, I guarantee it exists. I guarantee. But you know what it is? It's like, this is, this is what the, this is and the fitness industry feeds into this, right? They come out with new, exciting stuff all the time. The Polka newest way to work bodies. out, yeah. the newest exciting thing. And what happens? A person goes into it, and at first it's fun and it's exciting, and they do it, and they're hyped and they're motivated. But then they fall off <laughs> because that initial excitement starts to wear off. So I blame us for this. I blame us for this. Oh, we feed into it. Yeah, I, I really Not do. us personally. Yeah. <laughs> Not, <laughs> <us> <laughs> Not anymore. Right? I do. Yeah. But I mean, I, I was guilty of this. My, uh, my, you know, first introduction to personal training and programming, okay, was not like very science-based. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like- It was razzle-dazzle. It was. It uh -huh. was, what What can I teach a client so that when they come there, they go like, whoa, I've never seen this, or I don't know how to do this, or that, you know, that, that was the, that when I sat down and wrote programs early on- and I still think this is, I think this is very prevalent in the space. I see it all the yeah. time. And uh, I mean, even from like smart guys, I mean, I one of our friends, I remember that is really smart, dude. I remember when he first referenced programs as like ice cream flavors, you know, all the you know, programs are all the same. They're just like ice cream flavors, whatever people like. I'm like, huh? I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, you really believe that? Like, I mean, I thought that too when I was 22. And so I think that the space perpetuates it because you have people that are gravitating and they're like, Oh, I want to have fun or I want something different. And then you have trainers saying like, Oh, this is how you should work out. And yes. so it's like this vicious cycle. Yeah. yeah. It's all this experience based, uh, emphasis. So it's like, you want to entertain and you want to get people in the door and like always have something new and, and have them leave with this like buzz of like, Oh wow, I've never done anything like that before. Right. There's two, there's two root issues with that. One is that either new coaches, new trainers, or just the fitness industry at large treats, exercises as like, well, it's a squat. You've already done a squat. You know what a squat is. Let's find something new as if there's no more value in practicing and With performing tried squats. And true. Right. For, for years and years and years. And I remember when I figured that out, I, I did what you did. Like most trainers in the beginning, it was, it was the show. It was razzle dazzle. What can I combine? What two exercises can I put together? What weird way can I make this exercise different? Eventually you run out of tricks and combinations and people fall off. And then I went with the tried and true basics and consistency. And it's funny because as quote unquote boring as the workouts may look on paper, my, my clients became far more consistent mm -hmm. and the results became better. Here's the second part. People don't realize that you have that what you're developing with workouts. If you want to do this forever, if you want to really, if you want to get in shape and get out of shape, then stop listening. But if you want to get in shape and stay in shape, this is a relationship. This is a relationship. That's one that evolves over time. It's not different than finding the right partner, you fall in love, head over heels. Two years later, that feeling of, of oh my God, I can't sleep. I love this person so much. I'm so infatuated. It starts to go away. Well, now you got to work on the relationship part because otherwise you'll be jumping from one person 
to the another and not figure out why you can't have this long-term relationship. The key to developing a long-term relationship with exercise is, yes, you appreciate the excitement of doing a new something different and novel, but really it's appreciating mm -hmm. the value of the workout itself. And that's a different mindset. So rather than trying to find the workout that always elicits that excitement in you, which means mm -hmm. you're going to inevitably go on and off, find a way to love the process itself. That's what develops that long-term relationship. Yeah, dig into the details of some of these lifts. I mean, that uh, seem like they're always repeating in your workouts and it's always something that uh, you're you're constantly working on, but it allows you to get better, more proficient. It allows you know you to develop that skill uh, required to you know really start to, to move yourself even further forward uh, versus always throwing you some kind of new stimulus that distracts you from uh, going forward. That's do, you it. Think, do you think there's more there? Like, do, like there's a psychological phenomenon that's happening. Like there, it's subconsciously these people are drawn to the novelty and they don't even realize it. And so therefore they want to do that. And then you have, and then the trainer is just reinforcing that because that's what the client wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's part yeah, of the this problem. Negative feedback loop. Yeah. Cause it obviously uh, it's, it, it's not, uh, it's not strange that we all came to the same conclusion as early trainers that, oh, this works. You mm -hmm. know, like give the client something random. Well, define do. works because what we thought well, yeah. were, yeah. works it pulls works them in. in. Yeah, works is keeping them as a client or bringing them bringing them for in. For like a short period, right? Right, for yeah. a short period of time. Um, but I mean, I, I guess if you, <clears throat> if you take a client and you do these kind of, you know, crappy novel type of workouts where it's, you know, you're throwing something at them every different, different every day, but you 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 teach and preach consistency and you help them nutritionally it, this this does work for a while that's the part that i think is 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 challenging i mean it wasn't like i was an unsuccessful trainer for my first 10 years but on, but what's crazy and i don't know how much we've talked about this on the show but this is actually what uh, mind pump would have never happened had i not been in a place in my career where this was really coming full circle for me when I was really starting to understand the, the value of order, the, the order of operation when it comes to exercise and program design. And you sent me maps anabolic. Hmm. It was, it wasn't that long. It wasn't long before that, that that had really just, I mean, I had already trained for damn near eight, nine years plus yeah. of kind of the same way. And the, 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 the kind of boring programming, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, that uh, I was starting to create that was I was starting to notice these bigger gains and like you said consistency from the clients is like oh my god I've really simplified how I'm writing these programs and it's what's it's really what's working <clears throat> and that was when you sent over maps in a bulk and it was like and had that not happened literally like the timing yeah. I would have probably never said dude we got to talk let's meet um, because that literally had just kind of dawned on me. It wasn't that long before that. And so it was fresh in my mind. Like this is the, and I remember being a little bit frustrated with the space because I felt like nobody was communicating that. Mm -hmm. And that was why I was like, I had to pick the phone up. I'm like, I got to call you because I, it's taken me eight almost, or almost 10 years at that time to figure this out. And no, I haven't, I hadn't been, and I've been in the space. I hadn't been marketed. I've been told I hadn't seen this. And so that was what made me pick yeah, up the phone. Yeah, it's interesting thinking about that. It, I, I remember as CrossFit emerged, um, and and I actually was like in that headspace of like always trying to find uh, the latest kind of a trend out there, like some kind of uh, workout method that I could include to kind of spice up the workouts and keep my my clients uh, engaged and entertained and all that. And then I was like, oh wow, CrossFit, you know, they're just throwing the kitchen sink at everybody. I was like. My, I might want to try this. And so I was trying it and I'm like, wow, this is just way too much. And, you know, kind of overboard. Uh, and then that sort of changed my mindset. And I started kind of going in opposite direction in terms of like, um, like let's bring it back down to like what really I need them to focus on and like move forward, get strong and, and like get rid of like the balance on one leg stuff from an ASM and like do like, there was just so many different distractions that I was like bringing in and then just started to kind of filter all that out. And then I started to have way better success with yeah. my clients. And I, I look the, your, your best clues as to what works uh, forever in terms of exercise relationship. Okay. Not just the workouts themselves, but like, the kind of relationship with exercise that allows you to stick with it forever. The best clues come from people who've been doing it for 10 plus years, right? People who've been doing consistently for a long time. And if you look at their workouts, they don't look that different 
um, most of the time. Now, they'll modify the intensity and they'll change things depending on if they're injured or they don't feel good or they're tired. But they have kind of this basic tried and true kind of model. Now, there are those people who do change things up uh, relatively, I'm going to explain that here in a second, relatively often who also have a lifelong relationship with exercise, but there's a difference. These people pick something up new and then spend a long time becoming masters at it, right? So this is the bodybuilder who's like, wow, kettlebells are interesting. And then they spend three, four years mastering kettlebells. And then they do weightlifting and they go, whoa, this is interesting. And then they spend three, four years mastering weightlifting. I'm not talking about those people. What I'm talking about is the person and people, this is a lot of people, when they'll do this new exciting thing and then the excitement wears off after, I don't know, three months, six months, and then they try to find the new, the next new and exciting thing. The fitness industry is it, literally, you could define it with one word, fad, mm -hmm. fad. Yeah. Everything in the fitness industry. So many of them. Oh my, workout fads, exercise equipment fads, supplement fads diet, fads, diet fads. It's literally fads. And if you stay in the space long enough, you actually see these fads disappear and then cycle back and yeah. then they disappear and they cycle back. I remember when I first started uh, in the space, seeing these like TENS units, which by the way, have existed for a long time, uh, since the 60s, right? These are the pads you put on muscles, sends an electric current, makes the muscle flex. Mm -hmm. So they've been around for a long, decades and decades. And I remember seeing them on TV in the 90s, put this on your abs, sit at work. <laughs> this guy like, it's like doing a thousand push ups. And he's got it uh, yeah. hooked up to his stomach. And then people bought it and then it went out of favor and then it came back again and it went out of favor. And every time it comes back, it's a little different. Now there's one that looks like a butterfly you put on your butt, lifts yeah. your butt type of deal. <laughs> so Dude, it's like have a whole suit for him. Yeah, now. you see different iterations of low carb, different iterations of. Oh, yeah. I mean, low fat Atkins and, was what? Atkins was in the like the 80s, right? That was or, in the 90s. And that wasn't yeah. even the first like time yeah. that we'd had talked about, yeah. you know, a low carb hydrate diet. So it's it's all about fads. And what they do is they capture people when people are in that vulnerable space of feeling shitty about themselves. And now I'm motivated by this shitty feeling, which is a short-term motivator. So it's not a long-term motivator. It's short-term, but it's powerful. If you're a marketer, I'm going to tell you something right now. Here's a little secret for those of you that want to make money at the expense of people's health, which, which if that's you, I hope you're not listening. But if you are, here's an easy way to make money. Find a way to tap into this is what the fitness industry does. Tap into when people feel shitty about themselves, that period of time when they feel shitty and they feel motivated because they feel shitty. You can sell them anything. Yeah. You can sell them anyone. If, I, if someone sits in front of me and I have no integrity and they sit in front of me and they're like, I'm so fat, nobody likes me, I hate the way I look, I'm lazy, um, and you know it's really pissing me off and I want to do something about it, I can sell you whatever I want. Now, I know it's not going to last and I know it's not going to work, and I have integrity, so I don't communicate uh, the, that way to those people. But the fitness space and the marketers know this, and so they capitalize. So you feel shitty, you're motivated because you hate yourself. Oh, here, try this new thing you never heard of, or something different. Or here, show up at this class, it's going to be exciting, or this new well, way of working out is totally different. It's interesting, too, because the um, the algorithm feeds this. Totally. Right? So it's, I remember when we first started the podcast, and um, people thought it was a terrible idea to be mind pump. Like, what the fuck is mind pump, oh, yeah. right? And yeah. everybody was like, you should do... And at that time, it was right at the height of keto. Keto yeah. was like, you know, like... And like all these podcasts that were like passing us up were, you know, keto this, keto, keto that. Keto kids. Yeah. Right. Whatever. And so... And I, I mean, we're seeing this right now with the carnivore diet and liver king and stuff like that. It's like you get these, you get these uh, fads, to your point, Sal, that happen. And so many people are searching it that mm -hmm. these, these things start to rise to the top. And so everybody starts and everybody starts jumping in. It's like, I mean, look at what's going on. And I, I even hate to to bring his name up right now because I probably would like the guy if I met him in person. I don't know. I don't know anything about him. But I, I it's like everybody is like every Instagram story. Everything is either uh, Andrew Tate or Liver King right now. Yeah. It's like because those guys are viral and mm -hmm. everyone's talking about it. And so, oh, I, I can't I can't come up with my own original content. So I know what I'll do is I'll piggyback off of that. Fad. Which just pushes that even more. Yeah, which just pushes and feeds into that even more. So you just if you're a consumer or you're somebody who's getting into this space and you're trying to learn about health and wellness, you got to become aware of this stuff that it's a lot of it is just a fad and it's just being rebranded over and over. I'll give you some Carnival tips. Acts. I'll give you some tips right now. If this is something that you want to do and you want to be able to do forever and it not be this crazy struggle <laughs> for the rest of your life. If you want to, if you want to get into the space where you want to work out, where you want to 
uh, be fit, not because you hate yourself, but you just actually enjoy it. Here's some tips. Number one, learn to create a healthy relationship with the kind of pain that you feel when you work out. This is very important. What do I mean by that? Well, the pain you feel in your workout shouldn't be cathartic because you hate yourself. So that's a bad relationship. It also shouldn't be pain that you avoid and hate because it's scary and you don't like the way it feels. It sh you should have a healthy relationship where the right kind of pain, the burn, the pump, the struggle is something that you start to actually enjoy. It still hurts. It's still a challenge. Like I work out, it still challenges me, but I have now developed a relationship with it where I actually enjoy this kind of healthy relationship. So that's one. Here's the other one. Develop a relationship with discipline and consistency around exercise to where you value just the discipline of it, where you wake up and you go, I don't feel like working out, but I value the discipline that I have to go more than I hate the fact that I kind of mm -hmm. don't feel like working out. Like, when that happens, you just don't, you just don't miss workouts that often, right? That's yeah. another one. And here's the, the last one I'm going to say. Develop a relationship with exercise where when you do it, you truly feel like you're taking care of yourself. Like this is, oh man, I'm doing this for me and it's making me, it, it really helps me be a better person. So it's like this pro self growth relationship. If you can develop those three things, they take time, by the way, I'm, I'm making it sound simple. Like, oh, just do this, this, this it takes a little time. But if you can focus on those through your fitness journey and as you develop them, this becomes something that like, I'm, I, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm always going to have some type of a fitness uh, consistency for the rest of my life because I've developed yeah. those relationships. And yes, it may change depending on the context of my life and the circumstances, but I've developed that relationship. It takes time, but if you do those things, then you're on your road to long-term success. You Actually, can, then you can avoid the uh, fitness snow jobs. The, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You guys never watch uh, Elvis? What? Oh, yeah. Okay, so they, they, Doug gets it off. What they're, is they're talking. So this is like the the whole like showman entertainer carnival act thing. He talks all about like how to sort of manipulate the audience, and it's a lot of like how the snake oil travelers used to come through town, and then they'd razzle dazzle everybody and, and oh. kind of like hit them on their pain points, and uh, it, it was all like this massive hustle. And they call it snow jobs. And so, like, whatever your 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 thing is uh, that gets wow. people to to get riled up and get their emotions really high, then they manipulate them from there. It's called a snow job. Why is it a snow job? Like I you, have no idea. Because you bury them. Like, like a blizzard. You know, you can't oh, like see the truth, maybe. Oh, oh, so, yeah. So oh, it's actually job. a word. It's called a snow job. A oh, deception or concealment of one's real motive in an attempt to flatter or persuade. Look at you, Justin. Boom. Dropping bombs today. Yeah. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you mean you guys I was being all sexual. I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> like I, I, I actually did. I actually did think it was you something like that. I was like, whoa, that turned real quick. I guess we're going this direction. All them, all them snowmen. Actually, yeah. no, I didn't know. I thought it was, and I looked over at Doug. Doug normally por puckers up when somebody uh -huh. does something like yeah. that. Yeah. Pucker yeah. up like that. Doug's like, yes, it's snow job. <clears throat> Welcome back. Here's the giveaway for today's episode, Maps Anabolic. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Do those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. That's the only way you'll get notified by the official Mind Pump people in the comment section that you won free access to Maps Anabolic. Everybody else, check this out. We got a sale going on right now. Maps Symmetry, 50% off. Maps Strong, 50% off. If you want to take advantage of this sale that will be ending soon, click on the link at the top of the description below to get started. All right, here comes the show. So you're saying that uh, butter and coffee and blue blockers are not the answer? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wow, you know, that was a bit of a speaking of him talking I'm, about the, talking about somebody who captured uh, lightning in a bottle, right? He just I mean, jumped on this like and really capitalized on this weird. You know what I really I, that was uh, super obvious to me was when we were hanging out with Paul Check years ago, uh, and he was like telling us about how long he had been doing butter in his coffee. Because I really thought uh, didn't they, he say uh, oh, yak wait. butter? Uh, they were use yak butter yeah. and coffee. Who was it that did it? Like I don't monks, know, like, Tibetan monks? Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. it's like or old. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that old. I thought it was like again new science. Even I get fooled, right? Been in the space forever, and if there's something new that maybe I hadn't seen before, I assume that it was like oh, well, this is new cutting edge stuff. God, you like, know, I don't know this guy personally, but he's you know, Dave Asprey is interesting to me. He lost me by the way completely when he did his little butthole sunning uh, Instagram. Oh, was picture. he the one that started that? He didn't start it, but he definitely. Uh, Definitely jumped on the bandwagon and, and showed a picture of himself, you know, spreading no. his butt cheeks to the wow. sun. I feel like, okay, so I think that's like the, um, what's that? Not Reddit, but the other thread that's kind of crazy. Oh. Uh, uh, 4chan. There you 4chan. go. Yeah, I feel like. Uh, they made yeah, that they up. Yes. Yeah. When I see stuff now, I'm like, I, I'm super like. 
Ooh, there's probably some this, scientific articles somebody yes, wrote just dude, to get people. To I'm do the so training. like yeah. cautious now. Like, yeah. dude, I'm like, you know what? This is some 4chan shit that somebody freaking started. <laughs> Can somebody give, and it's like a massive troll of the fitness. It feels like it, right? Can yeah. somebody give <clears throat> Dave Asprey a pair of Felix Grays, please? He's always the wearing orange. orange. Yeah, he always has the dorkiest looking. I, you know, I, I have version, a theory. Right? I have a theory why. First I, off, if you could wear blue blockers that aren't orange, that are just as effective, that are as just of or more effective. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Here's why. Yeah. Because then you're not telling everybody. That's you're wearing exactly. Blue, blue blocker That's why it annoys me. It an, it annoys me because okay, I I understand. Of course, we we are partnered. We're investors in a company mm -hmm. like Felix Gray, so we see the value of it. I because what I recognize is the behaviors of people with technology. Yeah. So I absolutely think something like that is. But I'll tell you what, even knowing that, what has kept me away for so long is how dorky you have to look and how much it changes everything that, that you're looking at. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to wear these orange glasses that say, look at me. You know what? So I have some theories around that. So I get the value when, when those were the first things available, the first types of blue blockers that were effective and available. Which by it. the way, okay, remember when we were kids, like the commercial, the infomercials? For they the were literally called... Blue what did block. they call blue blockers? They were blue that blockers. That was the brand name. That was I remember that. Yes. And it showed a truck driver driving. Yes, at yeah. night. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they didn't drive off the road. Get two pairs for $29.99. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> so so I so I have a theory around that, right? So I, I get it when those were the first available ones. You put them on at night, and the the value of blocking blue light to help you sleep, especially if you're on electronics, outweighed this potential risk right here. So the way we perceive the world is very important, including the colors, the smells facial expressions, all that stuff. And I learned this firsthand when I had my first pair of blue blocker glasses before we worked with Felix Gray. I bought the orange ones and I put them on at night and I decided it was like nine o'clock at night. I'm like, you know, I'm a little hungry. I'm going to go to bed at 11. Yeah. So let me eat, eat some food. And I'm looking at my food through these orange glasses and the, the experience was totally different because the visual the experience, like yeah. in the matrix. Well, the visual experience <laughs> is also a part of uh, how you perceive, you know, your experience with food, right? Mm -hmm. This is why food manufacturers know this. How ultra processed foods, like the color, That's the vibrance. I, yeah, you see, like when they change the color of certain like food products, how badly it doesn't right, right. We know that yeah, about like black, the, ketchup. The ke black ketchup, black yeah. ketchup, and the uh, clear, clear Pepsi. Like, I can't. Yeah, some of those things you're just like disgusting. It reminds you of like it being rotten or, or putrid. Exactly. So I, I was eating, and I'm like, this doesn't feel the same. And I'm like, I wonder if there are potential negatives to wearing something that changes the color of everything around me for long periods of time, like Dave Asprey, who every interview I ever see is wearing them. I wonder if that's going to, ch that'll change how the brain reads your environment. It has to. So right? I don't, okay. So I don't, I don't buy that. He's always wearing them. You think he's just when the cameras are 100%, on? 100%, I think that. Yeah, you're probably right. I totally think that. And for, right. and for part of the reason you're saying right now, like you can't tell me that he hasn't figured that piece. Bro, he, I just, I just, he wears them more than any of us wear. And you, and you, when the first time you put that together, you're like, oh shit, this ruins my my dinner. Yeah. So I guarantee he takes them off I, like that. I, I it just, is all for the show, I, dude. I'm, okay, this is the last the, thing I'll say because I don't want to keep hammering on the guy. Yeah, isn't he just interviewing you soon? Huh? Isn't he interviewing you soon? I don't know. Hey, look. Hey, look. Interesting. this episode. Interesting guy. Interesting guy. But hopefully it happens before the air of this one. I just saw him do a, uh, an interview where he goes, um, my biological age oh is God, 38, that. but my chronological age is 50. Have you heard people say Bro, that? He's going to be in the biohacking space. He for sure is going to be the asshole who dies at like 62 no, from like natural don't causes. Say that. I hope not. <laughs> I mean, I'm I not wishing that, but yeah. I mean, it's like, it's that guy, the guy who like makes a claim like that. He's going to live, to, he says he's going to live like 150 or some shit, Didn't right? He say? Yeah, he says that. You know, you, you know why you can make that claim? Because until you die, you can capitalize on it. Then when you die, nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. So, so you get How rich you all the way to 62. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really dead. 23, dude. I'm honest with you guys. Yeah. What is it? So biological age, I guess they can look at your telomeres and your mitochondria and guess your biological age. That's I, I understand the science behind it, but it's I don't- uh, They did that for Katrina. I, Katrina was really- She was like- uh, no, they they do it with women, like with their their eggs, their hormone. They check all oh, that stuff. So it's see. more it's more than just your telomeres. It's like a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they they test to get that. I don't know exactly what it is, but I remember when she, they she found that out. Well, least. sometimes I feel like my emotional age is like 15. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, all those jokes are still appropriate. For yeah, me, you know, for some reason, super I, juvenile. I know it's hilarious. <laughs> I told you guys, I'm, you know, my kids both have dark sets of humor, and my daughter that was revealing to be the worst. That's Which awesome. Is, I know. Dude, yeah. This has to be, a, okay, so this, you, you are, want that. You're yeah. the furthest. Well, actually, Doug. Uh, whatever guy you, dates you are going to be great, lucky. Oh, you, yeah. I would love that. Right? You and Doug have to, be, I mean, this has got to be an interesting time for you guys because you guys are, your kids are like, you're, they're turning into like little adults. 
now. So that to me, there's a, there's a, obviously I, I don't want to be there fast. I'm enjoying the yeah. young age right now, but there's a part of me that I, uh, it'll be really, I like, I think about it sometimes when he's, when I'm, he's sitting next to me or when I'm like, God, one day you and I are going to have like, like a intelligent, deep conversation. Yeah. Like that's a crazy thought when they're that That's little. not the thing that's oh, good. That's hard. The yeah. thing that you, that's hard. Cause that's fun. The, what's hard is this. Wow. One day. You're just not gonna want to hang out with oh me at all, God. and you're gonna think I'm a dork. That no matter what, me. bro, you can be the coolest fucker in the world. You could be Adam Schaefer, yeah. <laughs> and your son at, at one point is gonna be like, "Oh God, Dad, can you like turn the music down? Oh the my car? God, can you like not drop me off so close to the school or whatever?" So you guys just reminded me. I had this conversation with Everett last night, um, and I told you like he's starting to get really philosophical. And uh, we, we'll just sit there in bed. He loves, like, he looks forward to our conversations now, like, before bed. And, like, I, I was like, did I ever tell you about this, like, science fiction book that, that I've been, you know, working on and writing no. over the years? And he's like, no. Like, tell me about I literally it was like just going off, and it was like an hour and a half later. Courtney comes in, like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and he's like, "He's telling me his story, mom, and it's like taking forever." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "This is the most complicated story ever, Dad." Like, he's like, <laughs> "You thought he was all into it?" Uh, yeah, I thought he was totally into he's it. Big, oh. He's like, "I wanted to go to sleep like thirty oh, minutes." Oh, oh. <laughs> that would just like rip my heart out, like, dude. So that you've spent like years. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. No, he he liked it, but he was like, "Dad, like seriously, like yeah. I gotta go to bed." Just, hey, he just, <laughs> just give me the clip notes. Hey, at least your kid is aware enough to be polite. He's like, "All right, Dad." It's totally right. I, did. Uh, I was like, "Oh man, bro, I didn't I'll catch pick up my, on that I'll social ca cue." I'll, I'll catch my kid. Like I'll be telling him something, and I think like he's enthralled. And then they'll like check their phone and shit while I'm talking. I'm like, oh, yeah. rude little shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, fine. I'm boring you right now. Yeah, exactly. Hilarious. Speaking of nighttime conversations, I don't know. Let's have this call. It, this might get me in trouble, but anyway. Oh, boy. I know, this would be fun. This Is this a, dare I say, is this a wife thing or a, a female thing? There seems to be a- my seatbelt on. There yeah. seems to be a time of day when- Oh, when we talked about we this need, Yeah, when, when, <laughs> when stressful conversations have to, have to happen. And it's right before, right before bed. bed. Right like before bed. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I knew it. Why do they it's, do that? It, it's like universal or something. What is that? Does Bro, that happen? Because they're 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 brain ninjas. That's why they know they're doing that. That's when you're weak, dude. They, yes, have dude. they yeah, are totally that's fucking a. They are. They're yeah. they hundred percent. They're brain ninjas Every too. Time. They know that. They know oh, that. you wanted to sleep. Mine tonight? just did it to me like <laughs> literally two days ago, dude. Like we literally both had a, like a, a stressful day, a lot of stuff going on, and I, I you know. She rubbed me kind of the wrong way a little bit in the afternoon. I was kind of short, but not bad, just a little short. And then later on in the afternoon, she rubbed me kind of the wrong way a little bit. And then, you know, but what I was actually, I, okay, the the, the, the man side, I was like, oh, yeah, we fucking, we crushed today. Like, we had a little couple things, and we actually yeah. still good. And, and we're over it. Yeah, I walked yeah. by her in the Team kitchen, Schaefer. squeeze her butt, and kiss yeah. on her neck. You like, were wrong, Adam. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> we're sitting there. It's like 9 o'clock at night, watching the last Netflix show like that. And, and you know, um. I wanted to talk to you real quick. Real and it's like real quick. It's never real quick. You know, it. You know when you, you get frustrated with me, you can be really disrespectful. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, like, no. Like I thought we made it through today. We did so good. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. you really want to bring this up like right now too. And then you make it worse because you say that. I yeah. know. Dude. Oh yeah. We'll yeah. be like laying there and and I'm like, oh, you know what? We you know, I, I think it's cool. I think we, you know, and I have a tendency to like Something happens, I'll just like, okay, well, let's just avoid that for a second. So I get that. But we'll be saying, sitting there, and then it just comes up, you know? It's like, oh, about to turn off the TV, time to go to sleep. Hey, um, so that thing that happened earlier, oh, here we Ooh. God damn, or how do we navigate this? Because I want to go to sleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. I make it worse. But it's a thing. I think you hear something outside. Yeah. yeah like it's that's, a <laughs> sometimes that's my move. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Interrupt with yeah. snore. I'm gonna go protect. Oh, I'm already sleeping, huh? Yeah. It's uh, it's so it's a universal thing. It has to be a universal. Thing. I think it's because everything's calm and quiet, and then that's when you know it's I guess the best time to. Like, I think because we're physically stronger, they find ways to mentally fuck us. That's, <laughs> that's what it's I evolution. Think. It is evolution. I, I think for sure it's, it's a valid like, theory. Okay, you think you got all the muscles? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> say, watch what I yeah. fuck watch you sleep up deconstruct all night. you from the inside, <laughs> yeah, dude. Just yeah. Yeah, no, let's, let's talk about bills or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I know. I, I can't love, sleep. I love finance it. I can't sleep. Anyway, <laughs> at, at, at Justin, I want to ask you about something I saw on your Instagram, which looked like. Oh yeah, do you see that? It what looked you like 
like if God made a burger for Justin. Right? Oh, I saw the cheat. Where were you at? So there's this new place that opened up. Oh, it's a new place. Yeah, a new place. Um, and it's called The Hangar, I think. It's um, it's where this, this old... Um, well, basically, there's an airport that you used to be able to fly to, and then they made like a park out of it. And so they've had this building forever, and they didn't build it out because of the pandemic. And then so now they just opened it up. It's like a big brewery. And we just decided to go try it. And they have this burger there. And it, I was reading the ingredients. So I'm like, oh, wow, cool. Double burger. This sounds good. Cheese on cheese on it cheese. It said cheese skirt. Like, like, it's a like they sharp took two cheddar your, two skirt. It took two of your favorite words, put them together like, on a burger. <laughs> it's like, was me? this made for me? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. A burger and a skirt? Okay, okay, so how did, so because you have one of my favorite burger places in Santa Cruz, the the place I think it's called Burger. Burger. Yeah, called Burger. Oh, I've never right? been there before. Oh, oh it's, bomb. It, that's fantastic. Bomb. Yeah. That's a must go. Really? It's a fantastic yes. place. So it's it, it's one of my favorite burgers. We're looking for a place to go to dinner tonight. So go, it's getting me go to where we went with Doug. Where? Oh my oh, god! Yeah. Oh my god! That was so good. It was a Spanish. It, yeah, Teleferry. Bro, where's you? It's in will uh, Los Gatos. It. I, you will Delicious, love it. And it's dude. Spanish. Yes. And it's tapas. Like, yeah, oh, tapas okay. style, right? Yeah. We we must have tried fifteen plus things with Mike. I don't know if it was fifteen, but we ate a lot. Wow, well, it was pretty it was, close. We did a lot. It was quite, quite a few different things. Really? We had, yeah. And. Everything was good. Okay, yeah, because we're gonna have to have a good dinner when she listens to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta take her out. <laughs> but, okay, so was Slurge it a little? So was it was it better than that or as good? Oh, you know, it was. So just the burger itself was. Um, I couldn't even finish it, and I'm like usually easily like just put it down. It was so rich and like it was delicious, but it, they went overboard with the cheese, and I, I'm not one for like. Wow, like hold back on the cheese, right? Like I couldn't believe like other people would eat. I'm, I'm just imagining somebody who's not as much of like a, a crazy person. <laughs> Makes like you me. feel good about your addiction. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I had to actually put like, oh, There's more degenerates out here than me, <laughs> guys. He's like, I can't even finish this. That was like a bad better. thing for you to happen to <laughs> you. Just like, oh, I'm not that bad. <laughs> he's, he's in the back lot turning tricks for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you got some cheddar, man. Uh, yeah, some but I saw the picture of the cheese. Oh, coming so out delicious! So, oh my god, I was, I was like. Just there's something about, and you, obviously I can't have dairy, but that doesn't mean I don't love it. it. There's something about cheese when it gets when it gets crispy because it touches the uh -huh. whatever they're frying it or whatever on. Yes, oh. so it like melted on the top, and then it it came out to the sides, and it had that crisp like yeah. outside cover to oh, it. It was God. ridiculous. Speaking of cheese, we ordered uh, pizza last. Night. We haven't done this in a long time. We ordered pizza last night. What do you do when that happens? Well, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but uh, I get pizza with no cheese. You, you get you get bread. You get sauce bread. I uh, get yeah with with other stuff. So yeah. like you know sausage. So is pepperoni, it so is it the, so is yeah. it the cheese that fucks you up more, or is it actually the bread that oh, fucks you up more? No dairy. Well, dairy's instant. Oh, interesting. Instant. Uh, now so I you can, can do, handle gluten, but you can't. Gluten, I can handle. Like if I go gluten two three days in a row, then I start to not feel really good. And even after the first time, I ate, I'll get a little bloated, right? But if I go cheese or or milk or like ice cream. I can have like this much cheese. So I can have a little bit of cheese. But if I go, like if I eat pizza with cheese on it, it would be 30 minutes later, not good. And then it'd be bad the rest of the night. So, oh, wow. but anyway, we ordered pizza. Bread. And no, this, I, I ordered <laughs> bread with sauce. Yeah. Now here's what's annoying. I don't know if you guys have done this. DoorDash usually gets things right, but they get it wrong enough times to where I want to strangle people. Enough times. Yeah. It should never happen, but enough times to get it wrong. They bring the pizzas. We just ordered it. Everybody's hungry. It's a little late. We had a long day. And we never have pizza, so it's a big deal. Kids are excited. My pregnant wife is excited and pumped. And everybody's like, yeah, fucking pizza, right? Pizza. It shows up. Now, remember, this is an Italian ho household, okay? <clears throat> so they bring the pizzas. My small bread with sauce or whatever. And the large, what's supposed to be pepperoni pizza. Now, I want you guys to guess... What's the worst possible wrong pizza you could send to an Italian household? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Hawaiian pineapple. 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 <laughs> Fucking Hawaiian. <laughs> Hawaiian. Wow. So Jessica opened I feel it. like somebody knew it was you. Somebody Bro. must have known like it was you. Yeah, so it's like, oh, Stefano. I bet this that Bro, one. <laughs> Jessica opens it, right? And she's like, remember, she's, she can give Bro, birth. Bro, I hope this is like a troll. I think this is so great. So she, could, she great. could give birth at almost any moment. I mean, the due date's like in a couple weeks, but you know how they say after a certain point, you could have the baby and it's not early. So she's like full on pregnant. Looking forward to this pizza. My kids are excited. They never get pizza. It shows up. She goes to get it, even though she's like, you know, uncomfortable and whatever. Yeah. She actually gets off the couch and goes to get it. I can tell she's excited. We're all excited, right? She gets it, opens it up. Fuck! Real loud. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, what happened? 
the wrong pizza. So I'm like, well, oh, okay, what is it? Combination? Like everybody. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we'll, we'll deal with it. Imagine the worst one. Bro, I walk over to it, <laughs> pineapple on my pizza. I'm like, are you serious right now? So then I go, watch this to, to, to Jessica. I said, watch my kids. They're such a, like pizza snobs. I said, hey kids, they brought the wrong pizza. Oh really? What is it? They walk over, they open it. Uh, I'm going back to my room. They walk back to <laughs> they the didn't, room. They didn't even eat it. <laughs> no. Damn, that's crazy. So you know what she did, which is funny? Because she was so hungry. We ended up ordering another one, but we had to wait another 45 minutes or whatever. So because she was so hungry, she like forced herself to eat a slice. And then she's like, this is gross. She's like, I'm going to see if the neighbor wants it. So she, she screenshots a picture of our pizza with a slice missing. With one missing. <laughs> Do you want the rest of this? Sends I it to our neighbor. It. I'm like, honey, you don't think that's weird? You know? You imagine our neighbor sends it. Hey, we, don't, we didn't finish yeah, our lasagna. We really today. hated this dish. You want some? By the way, we never talk to these people yeah. or anything. You know what I mean? So we just have their number in case of emergency. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm like, babe. I feel like there's like a a, a card of like some beach body person. But what's e yeah. hey, what's even better, though, is You're she, welcome. she sent a picture of the like one slice missing pizza to the, the guy next door. And then sent an explanation afterwards. The explanation didn't go through. So all he got was a picture of the pizza for like 10 minutes. And he's like, yeah, that was kind of weird. I just saw a picture of the thing. Like, is he, maybe he thought you were trying to flirt with him. <laughs> hey, I got this pizza over here. Husband's out of town. I already <laughs> ate a slice. Oh, hey, pizza guy. Want to come over, have some pizza? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, of all things, right? Oh, speaking man. of food, uh, speaking of food, this was a funny experience yesterday. Doug was walking around the the studio, not the studio, the our gym area or whatever. And going outside a little bit. And he had a little plastic cup full of colorful cereal. And he's just snacking on it. He, he, he eats it dry all the time. If nobody, yeah. if nobody, if we didn't know it was Magic Spoon, like, could you imagine somebody well, walked by, fitness producer? That was the one I opened, right? The one out there. Yeah. Because I was the doing the same thing before that because I was so hungry. Like, normally it's, we have some like beef sticks or we have something like kind of hanging around. But like, I was like in the back looking for anything. And I'm like, dude, Magic Spoon, yes. And I just started why don't, mowing why out. Why don't you guys it. eat it dry more? Do you eat it dry a lot? Right? I like it with milk. I mean, I, if it's the only option, I'll eat it dry. Yeah. I no, never, when I was I a know. kid, I used to eat dry cereal all the time. I never eat it dry. It's a nice Max does, snack. Though. I mean, I told you guys before that that's like the, one of the challenges. It's a protein snack. There's no, yeah, it's a pro, it, there's no microwave at his place, and so you know we get we don't heat up his normal. You meals. Give a little baggie of magic spoon. He has one of those little. You, uh, you I know your son has it too. You know the ones where their hands. Oh, get, what they call yeah. snack catcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, such a great invention. It, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. So stupid. It, I know. There's a lot of little things that kids have now that didn't exist back when I was a kid, or had my brother and sister who it's were like the you know, pit and Return of the Jedi. It's it's so smart though. It's like really clever because what little kids okay. do at that age is they they grab everything and like ninety percent of it falls out and they get the one. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so it does it naturally. Is like whoever thought of that was I think that dude. Was, that my was my kid right now, my younger my young one. He he's uh, he's figured out. It's very obvious now. He's figured out his how his cuteness can like like how he can use it right to his advantage. Mm. So he's yesterday, he's acting like a toddler. So if he doesn't get his atten attention, he'll scream. Ah, and you know, he'll, he'll, you know, he's, <laughs> he's got this thing now where he bites. So if he, if he, if he wants to hug you, he hugs you, he grits his teeth, but then he'll bite yeah. and, and he bit Jessica kind of hard. And so she got mad at him. Right. Mm. And he's just doing, he's just acting like a toddler, which can, you know, make you, make you want to pull your hair out. Just acting like a little shit. So I'm like, you know, listen, don't yell, don't scream, don't throw hard things. He'll throw a phone at someone's face. Oh I'm like, don't, God. that's not, you can't throw that. You could throw the fluffy He's thing. He's got such not, boy energy. So dude. much, just going, just going nuts. So then I, I open the freezer and I pull out, we have this like, um, it's not ice cream. It's uh, what's that ice cream that doesn't have dairy in it. It's more like a fruit. Uh, a sorbet. Sorbet. So I pull out the sorbet out of the freezer that we have that every sorbet. once in a while. So I pull it out and he sees it and he, from across the room and he runs over to me and he goes, hello. I'm like, what's up, buddy? <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, you've been screaming a lot and not really, and kind of acting up. Sorry. And he does a little sorry sign. Yeah. And then he makes this cute face. Hello. I'm like, are you acting cute right now? Because you want some sorbet, buddy? <laughs> Dude, papa, papa, <coughs> hug. Those big yeah. eyes. Yeah. Just like, Gives me a hug. I'm like, this kid already It's, it's it wild how quick they, they learn that manipulation oh, like that. Dude. Like, so Max has learned yeah, all works. the, so it's so funny to watch him right now with the, um, so like in school and, and he's learning all the like angry, sad, happy, like all oh, the different yeah. facial expressions and what they all mean and everything. And so recently I, Katrina and I, I was like, Hey, you know, he's, and he's healthy, fine. He's not been sick in quite a long, quite a long time now. And a uh, few times he's, he's come in a room and, and climbed into bed and like, and it's when it happens occasionally, it's not a big deal, but if it like is consistently happening every night, I normally will say something to Katrina like, Hey, are you, you going to keep letting him get in the bed or are you going to make him go back? And she's like, I know I've just been tired. I've, I've let him come in a few times. 
And so she the the last couple nights she's been she's been good about taking him back to his bed and not letting him like climb in. Okay, come on, son, let's go back mm-hmm. to your bed. But his he gets in there, he comes in the last night and uh he he comes up to her and she's like, Okay, let's go. And he goes, I'm sad. <laughs> and just she just like, Oh, honey. And she picks him up. Goes, yeah. And she's like, Are you okay? This thing, I'm sad. Yeah. And she just keeps saying, I'm sad. I'm like, oh my God. This, 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 this fool is totally yeah. manipulating oh, her right now. Wow. He's not sad. There's nothing for him to be sad about right now. Dude, but. <laughs> Ar- Aurelius does that. He'll he'll like he like again, this was also yesterday. Like I said, he was acting like a little <clears throat> like a, he just had a lot of energy. And he's in the other room. And then he gets up and he walks over to Jessica and goes, Oh, boo boo, boo boo, boo boo. And she's like, Oh, my baby. It's this whole thing that yeah, he does yeah. when he gets, you know, it's like he was, you hurt yourself in the other room. You walked all the way over here to tell your mom <laughs> yeah, yeah. that you got a boo boo. But it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you know, little boys do that uh, really well with their moms, don't they? Oh, no. I'll, I'll be wrestling. Because my daughter hits me like that yeah. really good. I'll be, I'll be wrestling with Max and he'll do this, like, he'll bump his head or do something. Oh, and he'll literally get up from me walk and go find his mom to let him, oh, ma, I hit my head, owie, owie. And it's like, dude, you're so funny, Yeah, dude. you know what my daughter does? She's older, she's a teenager, right? But she does this real well. She'll be sitting down and she'll just order me around. And I'm like, do it for her. Papa, can you get me a, you know, Papa, I'm thirsty, give me a glass of water. <laughs> and I just, uh, you know, automatic, bop, 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 bop. Here's some, hey, you want something oh, yeah, else? of course. Yeah, yeah, dad, can you get me, can you make me some popcorn? Yeah, absolutely, honey, bop, 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 bop. And Jessica's like, yeah. you know, you really need to stop manipulating your dad. You know, stop, <laughs> stop ordering around, you know, it's silent. You know, and I'm like, uh, uh, awkward. I don't even realize you're doing it, you know? Oh my but God. she's really good at it. Uh, yeah, I had to check my two kids on that. They do that to Courtney all the time. <laughs> I'm like, you go get up and get it. You know, they're just, I would like this. And I would, <laughs> Could you make this for me right now and some scrambled eggs while you're at it? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, like, dude, get up and, and go help. Yeah. <laughs> you lazy <laughs> shit. Sh- <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Hey, I want to I want to uh, comment on uh yesterday Josh Trent came in, good friend of ours, and uh, we had great, him on the show. Great, great time. What a him. nice guy. We love you know, Josh. You ever, you know, you dude. meet sometimes you meet CP, we by, we connected with him the first time we met him. Was it four years ago? Five years ago? Mm-hmm. It has to be at least five years ago, right? Yeah, we were in that podcasting event. Yeah, like in Soho. and he had us on his his podcast, and he, you know, he's one of the best interviewers I think I know. Mm-hmm. Just from a, he does a lot of preparation, but he's just a great conversationalist. But he genuinely is a good guy, so it's really nice to sit down and talk to talk to the guy. And he's just a just a nice. I remember, guy, I remember when we first met, and you know when we were doing like the, the interview circuit, right. That was like the only way to grow the show back then. And we did a lot, right. Remember how many we used to do a month. And I remember first meeting him and going, and all of us right afterwards, like that was probably one of the best interviewers we've met mm-hmm. yet. Yeah. And, and not, and I mean, he is, he's an incredible community. And I think too, a lot of that is just cause he is, he is authentic. Yeah. Like that's what it, and you put all of us in a room together. Like there's nothing scripted. There's no, I mean, I am a little nervous though. <laughs> I know oh, Doug is. Oh <laughs> no. Oh yeah. We, I mean, we, we went into, we touched, a little bit. I told Katrina when we got home, she's like, Oh, how was we the touched interview? every third I said, rail. She goes, how was the interview? I said, you know, it, I said, honestly, it was one of my favorite conversations I've had in a really long time. I said, we, I think we talked for two hours and, but I said, uh, we did, uh, spirituality, re- religion, COVID. Uh, what else did we oh, do? I mean, I mean, we literally touched every third rail in that conversation. So we'll see how the audience receives it because yeah. uh, we didn't really think about what we were talking about. We just kind of let the conversation the go. Conversation. And- it's nice when you, it reminds me of um, of when you're, when you're a trainer, when you figured that out. Like the reason why Josh is such a good interview. Yeah, he's got good conversational skills. Very you know, eloquent. He's got good verbal fluency, blah, blah, blah. But really what it is, is when you talk to him, you feel like you can say anything Mm -hmm. because you feel like he's going to hear what you have to say. There's not really any judgment. And he's also will open up back to you. And I remember discovering that as a trainer where, oh, if I don't act like Superman, like I know everything with my clients and let them know, oh, I know you're struggling with weight. You know, when I first started working out, um, I had some body image issues that I really had to deal with. When I would open up that way, it was so much more effective as a coach and trainer because then my tr- my clients felt like they could really open up and talk to me. Josh does that really well. Yeah. He just does that really well. Allows you to just kind of be yourself. Uh, yeah, I had. Did you get interviewed by the? I think her last. Her name is Jody. I can't remember her last name. She is fearlessly authentic as her podcast. Did Ooh, you? I don't know. She was. Uh, she's sixty. You just were on she's sixty-two. Oh, she was runner-up for Sports Illustrated cover uh, when she was fifty-eight. Wow. I did not believe her when we were first talking. She looks thirty-something. Really? Cool. Yeah, crazy. But she was asking about 
like she's she also listens to the show uh, you know, like if there was, uh, you know, did we formulate the conversation and what made mm. it so successful? I said, honestly, it was really the the conversation I think that we were all having with our, our clients. And I think one of the biggest keys that we had all already had come to before we did the podcast was how important it was to, to be vulnerable to your clients. So they would then open up and share with you. So then you could truly do the work and help them. You know, vulnerable, what, what that means, by the way, because you see a lot of people who think they're like, oh, oh yeah. here's what authentic Fake vulnerability. is. Yeah. What it, what it is, it's not necessarily showing weakness or challenges that you have. That's part of it. Really, it, being vulnerable means being really yourself. Yeah. Transparent. Now, why does that make you vulnerable? Because if people reject you, you can't go back and say, well, that's not the real me. I, I think because if they reject you, they really reject you. Right. So that's what makes you, that's what real, makes real, you vulnerable. Real vulnerability to me is when, when put in that position where somebody asks you a question that you're not ready for to know, you are truly honest. And what you see on social media right now is this manufacturing of, you know, authenticity yeah. or vulnerability where people are like, they, you know, yeah, you, go a make a, of my belly. you go make an Instagram story or a picture and you go, you know, oh, I too have fat or, oh, I had a period. Oh, and they, and they do this post. It's like, that's not true vulnerability. You sat down, you thought about what you wanted to say. Yeah, it's you to, real vulnerability is somebody hits you on the spot and asks you a really fucking tw tough question that hits an insecure spot of you yeah. or puts an area, makes you have to talk about something that you're uncomfortable and yep. you do it anyways because yep. you being radically honest is more important to you than, you know, looking a certain the worst, way. That's the, true vulnerability. The worst ones are the pictures of that people will post of themselves crying. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I was so sad. I was crying. Like you stopped, you took a picture of yourself and Hold you posted it. A second. Yeah. I, <laughs> when I, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm <laughs> just, <laughs> When I feel that's like that, that, the dude. last thing on my no. mind is I'm going to take a picture of myself. And that's not yeah. me. And by the way, that's not being inauthentic to do that. It's That's, that's very authentic. Yeah, when you feel that way, I don't want, I'm not trying to share it with a bunch of people that I don't truly know. I'll share it with that's you guys. That's so cringe to me. I, I just cannot. It's so cringe to me when I see that. It's, it's weird. It's not, it's not real. It's yeah. totally trying to. All right. So Adam, I'm, I'm going to take a, a quick left here because you and I, uh, there was a topic that we kind of shared, but from a different angle. So let, let me start with what I read. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to hear what you had to read. Yeah. I read a statistic <clears throat> that. Only 2% of people truly love their jobs. So 2% of people wow, honestly that low. love what they do. Now, that doesn't mean that, that everybody crazy. else hates their jobs. I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah, it doesn't mean everybody hates no, their jobs. No, of course. No, just means, look at it as work. There's 2% of people that really find deep passion in it. I now, what, is that, what that tells me is, like I did at the beginning of this podcast with fitness, stop trying to find this deep passion work, mm -hmm. rather learn how to like what you do. Otherwise you're going to be chasing jobs all the be time. Be a boomer, not a millennial. Because it's super rare, right? It's super yeah. rare where somebody really does something they're super passionate about and it's this, you know, big source of meaning for wow, them. Well, you know what's really fascinating about that? that? I mean, that obviously means too, that includes entrepreneurship, which means that that also is people that went and built something they thought they wanted to build and then they didn't they didn't love it as much yeah. as they Well, they, I wonder what percentage of the population are actual entrepreneurs. And yeah. then what percentage of them love what they, I bet it's a much higher percentage, right? Of those. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, actually what you're talking about, I was, I was watching the interview with, <clears throat> do you remember who, uh, Sam Parr's, um, co-host is Doug? Don't what, recall his name now. So they have a, they have a podcast. I called, love their, their clips. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my first million. And he was talking about, uh, he was giving advice about, um, not searching for a job and hunting for a job. And I thought that was really uh, a really cool way to, to put it. And he says, you know, so many people, when they need a job, they go searching for a job. <clears throat> and they'll look for an opportunity and then weigh it out whether they want to do it or not versus looking at the landscape. And, and, and a perfect example of this to me is the story of Enzo getting in with Mind Pump. He wanted to work with us so bad that he found ways oh, to create an opportunity for him. We weren't looking. We weren't hiring. <clears throat> we didn't even want anybody at that time. And but he wanted to work here so bad that he had. Tr and he, you know, obviously he tried going the direct way, which is, hey, do you want to? Can, can I work here? Is there any job opportunities? And of course, did we shut it down? No, no. You know, and eventually he worked his way around to hiring Jessica yeah. as a trainer, right. won her over, and then she then introduced him to you, won you over, and then we literally created an opportunity for yeah. him because we liked him so much. And so that was kind of like uh, the first person that I thought of when mm -hmm. I heard that. Of like, and, and I think that this is what I would do. Like if let, let's say this imploded and we didn't have mind pump anymore and I had to go figure things out. 
I, I, I would look at what do I want to do? Okay, we'll go look at all the, the, the ca- careers or positions or, you know, employers that, that offer that. And even if they're not hiring, that doesn't matter to me. Hunt it. I'm going to hunt it. I'm going to go, I'm going to go get up on LinkedIn. I'm going to look at all the people that work there. And then I'm going to find a way to either meet them on social media or meet them in person and, and, and get to know them and find out what, what the company does and like learn about the business and then learn if, are there any holes that I can fill that they are potentially or improve areas, something that they're doing. And so I think that's such a better strategy at at getting a a good job or getting a job that you really want to do versus like, oh, I'm jobless or I want a better job. So I'm just going to put my resume out there, see what comes back. Instead, why don't you go look for wow. what you really want to do yeah. and find a way, even if they're not hiring, because many times, just like it happened to us, we weren't looking for a position, yeah. but not, I mean, if you're, if you're a good employer or you're good at building a business, um, rarely ever will you deny somebody who you think could be a potential A player. You'll find a way. You'll find a way or make a position yeah. for them or do something to allow them to potentially prove themselves because they had already did such a good job of working their way in. Yeah, that's how I became a trainer. Mm-hmm. I, I became a trainer. I walked in and I asked, I was. I just I had just turned 18. I had to be old enough because I remember they said, you can't work here unless you're 18. I walked up to the front desk, asked for um, an application. They gave it to me. Then I went and I asked for the manager. <laughs> Manager's not here. Is there a manager under them? And it was the fitness manager that came out. And I literally made my interview right then and there. Shook his hand and basically <clears throat> did my sales talk as to why he needs to hire me. It right was such now. a good conversation when they said that because I actually had never really thought about that. And I thought, you know, actually, that's exactly what I would do if this wasn't working out. Like, I mm-hmm. wouldn't go like put my thing on monstersjob.com or whatever those websites are. Yeah. And like, let's see what I get. I would literally go, well, who do I want? I would look at my list of people Targeting, I know yeah. and go target somebody and uh, uh, what they do and then find a way. And I would do my homework, right? Mm-hmm. I would like, okay, I want to work for him or I want to work for her. I want to work for that company. Um, what do I want to do for that company? And then go like, okay, what skills would that, would that job probably need to entail? Yeah. Okay, let me learn everything I can about it and find a way that I could support them on my own time, not asking anything in return, just to prove that I'm value. Yeah. 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 And in the meantime, figure out how to reframe what you're doing to make your basic needs met. Uh, so that way you're not miserable, right? <laughs> like, so it's like everybody has a job that's, they have to do it at the, at the time because this is what is available. This is what's paying the bills. Like, I feel like we've gone so far away from that. And we're so like, they, we have this idea of some fantastical like job that's like going to change the world and going to do all these things for you. When in fact, it's, a lot of it's right there in front of you, the lesson that you need to learn right then yeah, and there. And that's because people, we are sold. This is a big lie. We're sold that we're going to find our purpose and meaning in our work. And yeah. that is rare. You know what that I would, rare. You know what I would like to see too. And since you brought that stat up, I've, and this would be an interesting one of the two percent. <clears throat> how many of them would still feel the same way even if they were doing something else? That's because this that's is where I, I have a hard right. time. Is it the job or the person? That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Because I have point. a really hard time when I get asked like some, someone like that's searching for purpose or trying to find this dream job because I I, I can't relate to that because I've done a lot of things. Uh, in my life as far as for money working and I've found a way to to like all of them yeah I mean from shoveling exactly. shit to mowing lawns to vending machines Except to for the car bees. washing huh the, the bees are the only one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're a beekeeper that's fair that's fair that's fair, that's fair. That's fair. There, that was that was one that I was like I can't do this yeah, you have limits there's so <laughs> yeah. that's probably actually it's funny you say that's probably the only thing that I was I know like, it is you've said that before hell no yeah, yeah. it was like the only thing I was like was it the first day on the job and then they came yeah. up to suit right yeah yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Very, it felt like when it was going down his butt yeah, crack I was like oh Remember? I can't I can't do this yeah I was like this I, I can't do this no matter what. Like, yeah, yeah, I get sure. that. You're There's right. Limits. That is like the only thing I probably hey, said I can't we all, do. Hey, that we, was plumbing for me when, when one of the pipes like fell and then I had like human <clears throat> excrement on my arm. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I am never doing this again. Oh, dude. yeah. Like, no you know what's funny? You. We all did this with fitness. We all did. How long did we all stick with fitness until it turned into mind pump? Oh, yeah. Fitness is a hard space yeah, to yeah. support a family. I'm just going to tell you that. In California, at least, or in the Bay yeah. Area. It's a hard uh, space. Well, But we all stuck to it for like two and a half decades. I mean, like all the <laughs> other jobs, what, what I learned to do, it's funny because it's it's the exact same advice that we give with a client, teaching them how to learn to love the journey with 
exercise is I actually don't focus on the parts of the job I don't like. I don't right. focus on, oh, I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning. I don't focus on, oh, the cow would shit on me every once in a while. I don't focus on that. I focus on, man, I have all this autonomy and freedom. So cool. Like yeah. mm -hmm. I can go at my own pace and speed. Oh, I can listen to the radio stations that I want to listen to. Like, oh, I can, I can uh, eat and drink at the same time while I'm doing this. Like I, I focus on all, oh, I get to drive this really cool quad and tractor. Like I, I constantly would focus on the aspects of of it and that I enjoyed and reframed how I looked at it. And I really think that that advice plays right into how what we talk to people about loving their fitness journey. Totally. It's like stop thinking about the the soreness and how slow the grind is to get to the goal and so like that and start connecting the dots to all the things that you enjoy and like about the process. Right. Check this out. You're not what you eat, you're what you digest. If you have digestive issues, you may not be assimilating all the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that your body should be. In other words, you're not getting the gains you should get. You're not getting the performance you should get. Well, sometimes the solution is to have extra digestive enzymes, or put it differently, your body's not making enough digestive enzymes, especially as you get older. Supplementing with digestive enzymes can be a game changer. There's only one company we work with that does this, that we uh, respect, and that's Masszymes. They make digestive enzymes for athletic-minded, fitness-minded people. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mindpump10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from Pete Kendrick One. What the heck is turkesterone? And is it any good? Oh, I have no it's idea. A turkey testosterone. testosterone, right? You're the only one that's experimented with this, right? Mm. So, yeah. So, um, ectosteroids, ectosteroids is the actual name of these compounds, are insect hormones, but they're also mm. compounds found in plants. And they have a molecular structure that's similar to androgens like testosterone. Okay. Now, they don't attach to the androgen receptor. So, it's not like they go, you take them and then they attach to the androgen receptor like a steroid would. Nonetheless, these compounds have been studied for a long time, especially in the Soviet Union, and they have been shown to have muscle building, recovery boosting, adaptogenic type of effects on the body. In fact, Is there there's any a, side effects like exoskeleton, no, or like thorax <laughs> yeah. growth. You throw up on your food the and then you Yeah. No, no, actually. Um, so I'll talk about my personal experience pee -pee. in a second. I'm just going to talk about the the studies. There's studies that show that giving it to sheep increases their wool production and their body mass. They'll give it to other animals and they'll see more muscle mass, better re you know, recovery. There's some human studies. Soviet, the Soviet Union did a study with athletes where they actually compared it with an anabolic steroid, a low dose. It actually outperformed. This is in a six week, I think it was, or 10 week study. So it was a short study. Hmm. It actually outperformed this, this, this anabolic. There was a study that compared it to Dianabol. This is a classic. Is this legal? Yeah, yeah. Ecti steroids are legal probably will become controlled if they aren't already, sorry, not controlled, but will probably become banned at some point by, uh, what's the committee that that determines what's banned in the Olympics? Oh. Uh, what is uh, that? Not USADA, because that's the that's, uh, UFC. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, QAnon. It's like that. No, not no. that either, Adam. You might want to <laughs> totally different, on. different <laughs> organization. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna throw it right at <laughs> basketball. Uh, yeah. Mitochondria. It's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, no, whatever the governing body is. Wada. Wada. Thank you. Wada. Yes. Maybe Doug, look up ectosterone and Wada. I think they might have already banned it, or they're putting it on a potential of, of a list to ban, which then spiked the interest in these products. Oh, right? Of course. As soon as Wada says, "Hey, don't take this," everybody's like, "It must work." Yeah. Um. Stockpile. So it's interesting. The studies are interesting on it, and I can find studies that show. Like I actually uh, pulled some up here, um, you know. There's studies that show that it it's it's it doesn't have too many negative side effects, if any at all. It boosts the immune system, enhances athletic performance, improves insulin sensitivity, helps on muscle growth. Here's my experience with ectosteroids. Now I've never taken turkesterone. Turkesterone is just another way to get ectosteroids. I've taken ectosterone, which is the one that traditionally people would use. It uh, works. It's actually the one supplement I've ever used. What does it say there, Doug? For ecti uh, ectosterone, it's sufficient for placing it on the pro uh, prohibited list. Yeah. See, yeah. so you know, WADA is 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 looking at it and saying, "Hey, this this might be prohibited." Um, so Do you think that's ever? Do you think like 
somebody like writes that, like yeah. that's connected to it to like, mm. because of the point you made. They'd be a smart uh, marketer if they did. Right. I think that would just be like, in. just to write, the, write a bunch of, you know, blogs saying that, oh, WADA is considering no. taking it off. No, I mean, look, it. I would think that if I never used it and didn't experience it, Doug, scroll up and look at that study. Click well, on yes, that study. No trigger stone is not banned. No, no, no. Not yet. It, it's on the list of potential. Scroll up, Doug. There was a study there, right there, ect ectosteroids as non-conventional anabolic agents. Uh, let's see what WADA says about it. Um, maybe, Doug, you could scroll down. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk about my experience, and maybe you can read a little bit what they say. Actually, it's short. What does that say there? Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find the heart of this. Um, yeah, but, I'm gonna, I may have to get this. You might have to download the whole thing. Download the whole thing. I'm okay. not sure. So it says, it. as non-conventional, scroll up again. As non-conventional, nope, keep going. Up, up, up. Uh, anabolic agents, uh, pharma, pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics, and detection of ectosterone. So they're talking about how to detect it in your blood. So they're looking at ways to test it. Um, so, okay. So here's my experience from, with it. I, I used it. The first time I ever used ectosterone is probably late 90s. Um, maybe late nineties. I remember reading, I don't remember what magazine it was, but there was this article about like Soviet era supplements and studies. By the way, the Soviets studied rhodiola, which we now know increases athletic performance. They were the ones that really talk about that first. Um, lots of training techniques came out of the Soviet union. You got to keep consider the Soviet union, right? Being communist, they viewed the Olympics as a way to display it's their the, showcase. The, yeah. It's like, this is how we can display the superiority of our political system. Mm -hmm. And so they spent tremendous amounts of money and science and, you know, they, they skirted the ethics quite a bit on trying to produce the best athletes in the world in different sports to the point where they would literally find a kid and say, this kid has showing potential. You'll come to our state sponsored uh, facility and we're going to train you in swimming or weightlifting or wrestling in hopes that you'll make it to the Olympics. We'll pay your, we'll give your parents X amount of whatever, because now you live with us. And then you're now under the care of the state and they'll do all kinds of things with you, tests and different training methodologies. So a lot of crazy stuff came out of the Soviet Union. And, and some of it was around like these natural compounds or compounds that could potentially <clears throat> improve athletic performance. And ectosteroids were up there. So they're natural compounds. You find them in plants. You find some in spinach. You'd have to eat a shit ton of spinach though to get the efficacious dose. Here's my experience. They work. I took them. And the first time I took them, I built muscle, I got better pumps, my libido went up, and it felt a lot like or similar to the designer steroids that I used in the early uh, early 2000s, like um, you know uh, some, some of the ones that were over the counter back and, in those days. Androstenedine or whatever. No, not that. I mean, they were actual um, like super draw, super, which yeah. now uh, bodybuilders and powerlifters will buy on the black market because it's been banned. But back then it was over the counter. It feels, it felt similar to these designer steroids. Now here's the downside of it. The results you get from it are like 45 days. I would notice you get these great results after about 45 to 60 days, you plateau, notice nothing. Then you go off and you would notice a dip. So it wasn't like creatine that you could take all the time forever and great, great results. But you did get strength gains. My recovery would go through the roof. My appetite would go up. That's the other one. I'd have crazy dreams. That's another weird side effect. I put Doug on ectosterone a couple times when he was my client. You noticed the same stuff, right, Doug, when you were on him? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Just like- But it was very short-lived. Like 45 days, right? Do you yeah. know what m my thoughts on stuff like this is and why I actually don't know very much about it is when you look at the things that when in the pursuit of building muscle, because that's what this, the people that are attracted to this, right? In the pursuit yeah. of building muscle- uh, how much uh, supplements play in that role of you having success in that direction. It's, it's such a tiny fraction. And then when you add in like what, how much research goes into trying to figure these things out. And so far for decades now, longer than decades now, we have literally had nothing come out that is better than plain old creatine and even plain old creatine, in, in the grand scheme of things is yeah. not a game changer of a difference for muscle. So, and if something ever hits the market and actually shows to put on more muscle or be, muscle or be superior 
uh, to creatine, the whole fucking world is going to know. Yeah. Like overnight. Like yeah. it will be on the news. It will be in the front of every cover of magazines. Everybody will be talking about it. And so I really don't. Well, the, the reason why creatine is so. Did you say mass hole? Mass, yeah, <laughs> mass hole. Yeah, <laughs> today's today's episode is brought to you by mass hole. Use code mind pump for your trick yeah. Anyways. You know, what, you know what it is? is uh, uh, creatine is, has got health, effect, health, health benefits. You take it long term, you get health benefits, also stuff. Yeah. Ecti steroids, you'll get a short term effect. They plateau, then you kind of notice this negative. But effect. But you get my point, though, home. right? Yeah. Oh like, yeah, you know why? You know why it stuck out to me? Do you know why Ecti steroids stuck out to me? Why? It was a supplement that did something. How often do you take a supplement? <laughs> right. I mean, you know, there's a point there for sure. You know, Even what if I mean? it's temporary, uh, you felt the effects. Yeah. It's very hard to find something that actually, you know, you feel it. That's it. And, so and honestly, the person that gets it, that actually would get some sort of benefit from any of these are the the, the athletes who it's getting banned from. <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, the, the ones that are already checking all the crazy boxes, sleep is dialed, nutrition yep. is dialed, yep. training is dialed, consistency is dialed, like all that is, you know, progressive overload is dialed. Everything's dialed. And so they're like, oh, we can get- Now it's a matter of a competitive advantage. Yes, that's right. Can I get an extra 2% out of this? You know what's interesting, by the way, when, when they do when they did studies on ectosteroids here in the States, they tried to see if it affects, because at first when they marketed it like testosterone booster, and then they did hormone tests. No, it doesn't change, testo doesn't change the testosterone, doesn't attach to the androgen receptor. They think it might be mediating its effects through the estrogen receptor, which makes me cautious to, to, to use this if I'm a woman. Because uh, those effects could be more pronounced or have more potential negatives in a woman. I mean, that would make me cautious as a, as even a, a man because well, you mess with the estrogen levels. I mean, not like estrogen level levels, but I know what you mean. And again, I, I did notice a dip when I go off of them. You know, it's funny by the way. The last time I talked about ectosteroids on this podcast, a supplement company that sold ectosterone <laughs> clipped me talking about it and used it as an ad. Sure, yeah. we have zero connection to a company that sells these products and we never will. But try my mind pump code. Yeah, yeah, try that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have no connection, we never will. No. It does have some effects. It is interesting, but Adam's 100% right. Um, it's not It's not in the top 50 yeah. of things. That You're going to know. That's why I tell you, the people that I, we, we get, this is by far one of the most popular DMs I think I get, especially from young men is they want me to give my opinion on all these different SARMs yeah. and all these different all these different supplements that are out there and it's like listen dude when something that is like that is like really worth it that's going to be like really move the needle everybody is going to know yep. and you're going to hear us talk about it all the time because it's going to be that it's going to blow everyone's mind anything that passes creatine is yeah. going to like blow everybody's this mind. This may work, but I mean, there's a point zero zero per chance. Uh, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to tell the joke. <laughs> <laughs> you might grow mandibles. This was going to be a joke. Yes. Yeah, fuck. There it is. Hey, you know what? That would not stop some dudes from trade. That's what I mean. It's <laughs> you wouldn't have stopped me when I was like, 16. Yeah. Sal, you're going to gain uh, 50 pounds of muscle, <laughs> but you're going to grow mandibles. Be like, okay. okay. Let's, let's go. Let's Party. Next question is from Emily Fisher. Are the hip abductor adductor machines a waste of time? All right. There is no exercise that exists that doesn't have some value in right. the right application okay. in right. the right context. You started on the right path. So right. there's some value that could be used per, from pretty much anything that exists out there in the in the exercise space. That being said, yes, that, there are plenty of other there's lots of options that I would always rather do. So if someone yes. made a case, right, they said like, oh, X, Y, and Z, this is why I think it it's, has value. I'd say, okay, well, I would do this exercise instead. So I, I don't, I feel like um, it's almost a waste of time or worthless, not because there's not value in training those muscles because they're absolutely- Or using those machines. Yeah, there, it could be, the, but- there, are, like, I would rather do uh, band walk, walking, lateral uh, tube walking, or lateral, you know, sled drag, or, sled, or either lateral lunges, lunges, or yes. um, even or six squats. squats. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah, or yes. or a step up to a balance, and you know, so I would rather do all of those exercises than that. Now, that. why? This is the important part because the adductors and abductors perform as stabilizers. That's their one of the kind of main job. Now they can kind of be there. I mean, yeah, they're, they, not really they're a movers. Prime mover. Yeah, they're movers, but really what they do is stabilize when your prime movers, like your glutes and your quads and your hamstrings, are making you do Hence things. Hence why I said step up to a balance. Exactly. Like yeah. you train them in the way that they are going to gain the most benefit, and that typically involves doing lateral movements. Um, you know, movements that involve other muscles as well. But okay, so what might be more important is to say, well, when would this be appropriate, and when would these machines? Be applicable. 
Yeah. You know, I've used Some them. Some form of rehab. Yeah. I so think I, would, would, would or, apply. or maybe exactly. uh, a primer. Sure. Maybe maybe like real quick to get on there and do some light. You maybe don't have a, t a, a, a tube on you or whatever like that, and so you, and you don't want to get too fatigued by doing something like a step up to a, a, a balance. You so I, I just want to get those firing and then go into my squats. That's so, right. So I could I I've, could see that. I've used these machines recently because I've I've discovered I discovered such an imbalance with my um, abductors in particular that doing movements that really challenged my abductors like sled drags. Just it was it wasn't applicable at the time because uh, my form was so bad. Mm -hmm. So I first started with the super basic kind of isolation exercise. Then when I felt connecting to like I could connect to them, I got a little stronger. Then I moved to the lateral type stuff. So that's an application. But rehab mostly. I've had clients on it because they can't do almost anything else. Yeah, that involves you know strengthening those areas. So this is easy. Sit here and just use this muscle. Yeah, I've had clients where it made sense, and like you know they're super dominant and externally rotated, and everything was like pushing outward. So the muscle development, um, you know, for abduction was just like pretty crazy. So to to be able to kind of build some strength and at least you know try and develop muscles there was an important factor. But even then, I preferred using rubber bands quite a bit more and using lunges and things like that to include the whole body. Totally. The movement of it um but there is i mean you can make some cases for it for sure next question is from walker brian 65 how do you find a balance between gaining the benefits of mental fortitude through hard exercise and not overtraining for example david goggins when is it worth overstepping to gain mental strength i i picked this question because uh you know we've i think we've come out a couple times talking about you know uh yeah none of us really want to have David Goggins on the show, and I and I I want to make a couple of things clear. This was one. I actually think I would really like David Goggins. Um, he sounds he sounds cool as fuck. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like that message. You know, I, I like that, but I don't like it for the masses because I think it ends up setting a lot of people up for failure. Yes. Because let's be honest, uh, none of us are going to be. David Goggins, right? Mm -hmm. That that the mental fortitude that man has is unbelievably inspiring, uh, and I think and I think uh, the overall message, like I do think that uh, we're turning into a bunch of pussies. Mm -hmm. So I do like this idea of like we all need to stay hard, toughen up a little bit. But I caution people that are looking to get into health and fitness of of using that as their motivation to drive them through their exercises because I know that's a failing formula. And so that's kind of my stance on totally. that that messaging. So it's not a it's not a personal thing. And I think people have thought that because I've said some things before about him. Like I actually, but I really like the dude, and I I do like the message. But I know that who we're trying to communicate to, and I and I know that sets up most people, believe it or not, for failure. Even though he's right, more people need to push through that mental fortitude. More people need to have that yeah, discipline. Yeah, but here's, here's well, in where extreme, I... extreme environments, it makes perfect sense, right? Like, if you're going to be out on a battlefield, you're going to die. Like, yeah. you got to fucking have the most, the old, the ultimate mental fortitude you could possibly have. And so I think that in situations like that or like extreme um, high level performance sports and, and everything is just like a, a kill or be killed kind of a situation like with football playing or whatever it is like it, that type of a, a, a message I think applies a bit better. Yeah. But in terms of like your everyday fitness, um, you know, it's just a losing there's, strategy. There's a, there's a hierarchy uh, yeah. and there's an order of these skills that you develop. And before you get to, I can handle extreme pain, extreme temperature, extreme, you know, challenges that, that make me want to break down and cry, make me want to quit, but I push through. Before you get there, there's something else that's that you have to get to first, which is the mental fortitude required to have discipline and be consistent for years and years and years. You can't get to the, I can handle and, and, and get beat up and all until you can handle the consistency aspect, okay? And which one's going to have more value for the average person? The consistency <clears throat> part. So everybody's like, oh, look, here's the deal. I bet I could take the average person and I bet I can beat them up in a workout. And I bet that they'll enjoy that beat up, you know, beat me up workout once or twice. But you know what's going to be harder for them? Can you show up? For the rest of your life and work out. Can you show up for five years consistent? Can you show up for a year yeah. working out three days a week consistently? So that's the mental fortitude that we need to work on first. Before a Navy SEAL becomes a Navy SEAL, 
he has to understand or she has to understand, I got to show up and be consistent. I got to have discipline. So it's great to look at David Goggins and be like, oh my God, that's insane. But if you're at home struggling with stringing together three months of consistent exercise or stringing together, you know, eating healthy for a couple months, that doesn't apply to you anymore. Like, don't look at that. That's great. It's fun, entertaining. Don't seek that out because there's other things you need to work on first. So that's what we focus on. We focus on the consistency, which requires lots of mental fortitude. It does require that. The extreme intensity that's short-lived, there's value in that, but after you develop that discipline, after you develop those behaviors and those patterns. Also understand that we are we're attracted to these extremes. Mm -hmm. And so when you see the the Andrew Tates, the Liver Kings, the Goggins, like, you know, just to name a few, you know, extreme people in the in these categories, they go viral because we, we're, we're attracted to it or we we are adverse to it so much that we, we can't look away, right? We want to see what's going on, even though I, I don't agree with it, but I, I can't stop but look. And so these, these people get highlighted on mass. And why we're not as popular is because we're nuanced. Because you ask me a question, I probably never give you a straight answer because I don't, I go, depends. You know, do, do, is is it? Can this message be incredibly perfect and valuable for someone? Yeah, the right person at the right time in their journey in their life may need exactly that, or the right scenario. You're getting ready to go into war. You're a football player, yeah. and you need to push through. Like you give up all the time because you quit, and so that applies to that person at that part of their life. And so, yeah, the, the answer is depends. Sometimes that is, but for most people that are trying to live a health, a healthy and fit life and be stronger and be a little leaner and be consistent and have better relationships with your family and basically the whole rest of the sphere. Yeah. Those people, like, for the most part, this message isn't really for you, I promise. But no. Well, no. we yeah, we kind of create idols out of uh, some people we admire too, right, in terms of, like, professional sports and um it, say it's like an actor or somebody or like that's really good at their craft and they're just amazing uh and then they they talk about what they do on a daily basis and how they approach the world and what it, it, when in fact the context of that just does not translate at all to what you're doing in your journey and your path so there's just definitely like uh like a disconnect there it's not it's not that we don't um it's not that we condone the message, it's just that it might not apply to the majority of people. Also, the fitness space is has been filled with this message for right. decades. Right. This is not a, a message. We, we that, need a new one. This message doesn't need to be communicated. Jesus. This is the message that I heard when I first started, and it's the message that continues to be pushed. It's what drives extreme workouts and extreme diets right. and diet pills and shit like that. It's what pushes all that. You know what message yeah. needs to get pushed more? The one that we talk about all the time, and that's harder to sell. That takes longer. It's, it's longer, not, yeah. co you know, conversation. It's not as interesting. It's not as sexy. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? That's so really that's the that's the the conversation that needs to be had. Not the not the like push through. You could do it. Be smooth. Suck it up, Buttercup. That's an easy. That is an easy message to push. It's an easy message message to sh to sell, especially if you're a maniac. If you're like David Goggins, yeah. who for all intents and purposes is yeah. nothing like anybody watching this podcast right now. <laughs> You watch him do some shit, and he can sell that message very well. The guy's a badass, no right. doubt. That's right. Next question is from Michael Trendler. Any advice on entering the fitness media space like you guys? Oh, boy. I'm assuming this – can you look at their handle to see if they're like a trainer already? Did you see? or are they? No, I, is it, I, I looked it up. I don't. I think they have a private account. Oh, yeah. well. They'll start, well, start by un making your account on private because yeah. you're not going to get a lot of people following you. If you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, what are you your, hiding from us? <laughs> you, uh, that, so that's you know, I, I can tell you what not to do, what I think you shouldn't do. Okay, let's What, I, what let's I think you shouldn't do is try to sell fitness by looking – buffed, hot, or sexy, or attractive. I know that there's a lot of fitness people, there's a lot of people in our space who make money doing it that way, but it's rare. You're probably not going to be able to compete with those uh, anomalies. And it's also short-lived. You know, you're only going to look young and crazy looking for some certain period of time. And if you identify with that so strongly, that becomes your brand, boy, is aging going to be tough. You know, that's an interesting point that you use that as your first thing to go to. Like that, not do. Yeah, because... I mean, let's be honest. I mean, that was kind of what we did to first get the, uh, I mean, our first few hundred listeners came from my Instagram following. Yep. 
So, and it was built off of me building my physique and, and show So I kind of played that game to get the original attention. Now, I do 100% agree with you because you don't want to double and triple down. I mean, I remember how frustrating it was for me for the first like two years of the podcast that I was like, I was like, felt like I had to be that guy because that's what that everybody learned about us from me being that. And I'm like, God, this is, this is not me. Right. Like it, so I, I remember how, how frustrating that was. So I do agree that you do not want to make that the, the end all be all. I do think though, in, in a, in a visual, on a visual platform, uh, it, it, it helps to be fit when you're preaching a message around, sure. around fitness. So I do think there's somewhat of a balance. That can't be your brand and that can't yeah, be. Yeah. You know, you I, I exactly, you don't want, I, I think I, that's the part I really agree with you, but I think you also you uh, can be tactful about the, you, you know, in terms right. of it just being like the, the shirt off and the booty and everything like full exposure, like you can be professional. So the, 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 the best advice that I think I've given to somebody who wants to, to build something similar to us. And like, when I think back, like how I, things I might've done a little bit different um with what we did uh, or if let's say I was by myself right because that would be the most challenging thing was not having uh, these great partners is okay how do I build something by myself with this well first of all obviously if you're gonna build a, a big old media company where you're trying to attract millions of people you hopefully know your shit is somewhat you better because you're not going to attract all those people uh if you don't somewhat know what you're talking about so that's the first and foremost and then what I would do is I would actually leverage my training job whether I'm a, a, a personal trainer or I manage trainers or run a gym or something. And I would use my my daily interactions with my cl my current clientele to drive my content. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and why I think this is such a smart strategy is because that's already, that's going to improve my current thing. So if I was a personal trainer, like I was, you know, 10 plus years ago, and I've got, let's say 20 clients that I'm servicing and I have, you know, Christine that morning and she is telling me that she's got this knee issue and we're trying to troubleshoot it and figure out what's going on. Why is her knee bothering her? Is it something to do with her foot? Is it her hips? Mm -hmm. And and as I'm troubleshooting it with her, trying to figure that out, I'm also thinking like, oh, this is a piece of content. This is a piece of content. Whether that uh, I'm somebody who talks to a camera really well or I write it really well, like, and then I would use the medium that I, that I like best, right? So if you if you write really well, I think Sal writes really well. So things like blog and long form is like he could articulate that. Well. I'm I'm probably better at communicating than I am writing for sure. So I would probably do a video of me explaining what I just helped my client out with. And now that lives as a piece of content that my current business can go back and reference. And so I'm adding value to what I'm already already currently doing. And I'm also starting to attract other people out there in the virtual world that potentially would be suffering from these same things. And that's how I, I would just keep building content like that and let my current business steer what it looks There's like. There's a big part of what you're saying too, which is it, it, to do it right, it takes time. It, it, yeah. uh, here's the, And the reason why I said what I said, there's a couple of pieces uh, to what I said. One is we we are increasingly confused because of social media around the rules of business. It's It makes us feel like the old rules of business, which include hard work, diligence, consistency, and it takes Patience. time. Such a good point you're making. Uh, we, right now. we think that that doesn't apply anymore. It's the same game, man. It really yeah, it's, is. There's no difference you know. because what we see is we see these, what look to be these overnight successes, and maybe do some of them do exist, which is, by the way, 0.001% yeah. of everybody that's trying. So we see those and we think, oh, the way to build a business, first off, the old rules don't apply. So if I do this and it doesn't work in the first year, then it's not for me. There isn't a single, look, if you start any business, you got to expect to do years of consistency before really determining whether or not it's going to work You're making such a yep. good point, Sal, and that yep. it's like, <laughs> it's so much like building. And I think it's funny when I see people building like on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and, you know, they've only got a hundred people paying attention to them. And then I, I look at their, their comment section and they're not even talking to the people that are commenting on their page. You would never do that with a physical business. You no. imagine a hundred customers walk in your door. Yeah. I mean, I, if one, one walked in the door, if one person comments to you, one person DMs you, like you build a relationship with them. And that's why it is. It's a very slow grind. It's, a, it's of, business. It's like any business. And people think because it's on social media, the old rules don't apply anymore. So that's part of what I said earlier is don't try to create this brand around how hot and sexy you look. Here's what will happen. There's two things that could potentially happen from what I just said. One is the likely one, which it ain't going to work. 
you're un, you're very unlikely to be good looking enough, hot enough, sexy enough to gain the kind of viral attention that is required to build a business around it. So that's most 99.999% of you. That's true. Now the 0.001% where you may have the looks to make that work and it does, and you do succeed around it. You are now in hell. Yeah. It's still fleeting. No, you're now in hell. You now have built an identity around your appearance, which has almost no value in the real world when it comes to fitness, other than people just looking at you Being inspired. and you selling them shit yeah. and you try and sell them products. And then eventually you're stuck in this hell of how do I keep capturing this? Right. I'm not looking as good. I got to keep looking this particular way. I meet people in public. I got to put up this fake persona. surgeries now. It's not, did you guys just, have you guys seen the videos of Madonna? Just, to, just you know, Madonna, the, the artist. She's, she's identified so hard yeah. with being this sex icon that she's she's obviously in this crazy state of mental decline where she just cannot let herself age, right? Oh, I haven't seen you it. will be in hell if you build a brand over how you look, okay? Mm -hmm. just Especially in fitness, especially you care about helping people. So the biggest thing to understand is this. It's going to take a long time, like any other business. So what does that look like? Okay, well, if you're on Instagram, post two times a day, every day for the next however many years. And you <laughs> Provide real content. Co you know, communicate with the people commenting on your stuff, even if it's just five people, right? Mm -hmm. Get in there like any other business, treat it as such. It's no different than any other business. That, that would be and, the and you And you actually want that. So you could, you know how I look at, uh, Mike and I, were, Mike Matthews and I were talking about this, like, uh, and he's actually writing a book and he has this brilliant way of how he's doing it. He's using Twitter for this exact reason, which is this is how you use Twitter and, and YouTube and Instagram and these things like that. You use it as a massive litmus test to give you feedback if you're steering your ship in the right direction. You put out these things, like, let's go back to the first example. I said, I put out the knee thing. Uh, and maybe like I get, I add two followers from it. Hey, I got two new customers potentially. I'm going to service them. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to communicate with them, whatever. But then I put something out about, you know, cardio, right? We talk all about cardio and bam, it gets like 300 people. I'm like, oh, there's something here. There's something yeah. here now. Now let me create more content in this direction. So you use social media as a great, when you're building something like this as a, a litmus test to steer you in the direction of the conversation, you should probably, and maybe there's something that you communicate better than we do. Like, I mean, we talk about all kinds of things related to fitness and maybe there's an area that mm -hmm. you're just, you've realized over years and most trainers have been training for a while, figure this out. Like you have a specialty. Like you just, you, I mean, Sal's talked about it all the time about advanced age. He was so good with that client. So if you're a, tr a trainer like Sal and that was your thing, your stick, then you should totally communicate that message and try and attract those people because you're probably going to have the most success. But use the platforms like like that. Don't use them to try and go viral. Mm -hmm. You go viral overnight, and all of a sudden you have a like. Think of the like people don't even ever think about this. You know, I have a I want to sell uh, private training. That's my business. I want to get into the social media game. And uh, okay, let's pretend you got a million people overnight, and now you have tens of thousands trying to get training from you. You and you don't you have, have no way you of can't servicing. You can't service them. So it's a big loss. Yeah, this idea of us ch you chasing uh, social media to go viral is a is not a smart strategy. I used to tell you guys all the time, like I wouldn't want that to have happened to us in year one or two. We didn't have the systems, we didn't built. have the infrastructure. Yeah, we didn't have everything built to service that many people. So enjoy the process. Enjoy that it's going to take a while, and you got to learn about your customers, and you got to kind of figure that out along the way because a lot of times. You'll start a business and say, oh, I want it to look like Mind Pump. But then after year, two, three, it ends up morphing into something totally yeah, different. And it isn't ugly. Not to make anybody feel bad, but it's funny to me because I, I'll hear people say, oh, I, you know, Sal, I've been doing this for six months and I've only got a thousand followers or I'm only seeing this or whatever. I'm like, man, you know. Um, how I used to try to get a thousand. <laughs> Those are all real contacts. <laughs> I used to have to go outside. Like literally physically out, go outside and yeah. walk up to people, yeah. like go and walk up to people and find a way to talk to people. Or I'd stay in the gym and try and yeah. talk to people. Parking lots, surrounding businesses, like you're in there trying to like negotiate. Can I put like cards in here? Can I, can I host some kind of event here to just meet people? Yeah, and It's so much like so much more opportunity now, but you have to treat them like real people. A hundred percent. I wish I had a thousand eyes on me. Back in the day. Oh, my God. I tried to get 10 eyes on me back in the day. Not yeah. a 1,000. My God, a 1,000 would have been – I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Yeah. So it's there. It's just be consistent, and it takes time. Don't give up so easily. All the old rules apply. And build a business that you're proud of 
and one that you don't feel like you have to change who you are because the worst thing that could happen is you become famous for being someone you're not. Right. We've met people like that. A lot and of they're people. tortured. A lot of people. They yeah, are tortured. Majority, I would hate, really. could you imagine, I would hate, imagine if you made, I'm just going to give you a scenario. This actually happened to a girl. Imagine if you built a business off of being like super vegan and then somebody catches you eating like some fish at a restaurant. That actually happened, happened. to a young lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took a picture of her and posted it on, like be who you are because worst case scenario is Otherwise you, you're tortured, you get man. famous and then people notice you on the street and then you got to act like it's this fake person all, all right. the time. Screw that. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another yeah. thing. You'll see less injury as well.